What's up guys? In this video, we are going to talk about breath sounds, lung sounds, and everything you need to know about auscultation. Are you ready? Let's go! So first and foremost, what are breath sounds? These are the sounds that comes from the lungs during inhalation and exhalation that can be heard during auscultation. When an abnormality is heard in a patient's breath sounds, this indicates that other health issues may be present, such as asthma, COPD, foreign body obstructions, accumulation of fluid, heart failure, infections, inflammation of the airways, and pneumonia. Now of course there are many other abnormalities, these are just a few examples. But by listening to the quality, duration, and intensity of breath sounds, healthcare professionals like me and you can learn a lot more about a patient's condition in order to provide the most appropriate forms of treatment. So what is auscultation? Auscultation is a simple, non-invasive procedure that involves the use of a stethoscope to listen to the sounds produced by the body. And for the sake of this video, of course, we're focusing specifically on the lungs. A stethoscope amplifies the sounds within the lungs so that we can hear and have an idea of what's going on with the patient's condition. When performing lung auscultation, the bell or diaphragm of the stethoscope is placed on the patient's chest and or back. So both the patient's front and back and both of the patient's lungs should be compared to one another. So what are the types of breath sounds? Now whether you're a respiratory therapist, respiratory therapy student, or even if you're a nurse or a part of a different medical professional, knowing the different types of breath sounds is extremely important. Now, especially for respiratory therapists and physicians, but arguably just as important for nurses and other professionals as well. So first and foremost, you have the vesicular breath sounds. Now, vesicular is just a fancy way of saying normal breath sounds. These are low pitch sounds that you would expect to hear as air flows through an open airway. The sounds are usually soft and can be heard throughout the inspiratory and expiratory phase of breathing. And then we have adventitious breath sounds. These are the abnormal breath sounds that occur over the lungs and airways during auscultation. Adventitious breath sounds are commonly associated with a wide array of heart and lung conditions. The type, duration, location, and intensity of each adventitious breath sound can help medical professionals diagnose and treat medical conditions. This is why knowing the difference between each type of abnormal breath sounds is so important. And that leads us to the next part of the video, which is the lung sounds that you should be familiar with. First and foremost, we have crackles also known as rails. These are short, explosive lung sounds that are commonly heard as air moves through secretions in the small or middle airways of the lungs. So when crackles are heard during auscultation, this can be associated with fluid or secretions in the lungs, more specifically in the small or middle airways. Crackles can occur both on inspiration and expiration, but are more common during the inspiratory phase. There are two types of crackles that you should be familiar with. First, we have fine crackles. These indicate that fluid is in the smaller airways. They have a higher frequency and a shorter duration. These are often heard in patients with CHF and pulmonary edema and can be treated with diuretic medications such as Lasix. Then we have coarse crackles. These are lower in pitch and longer in duration. They are caused by secretions in the larger airways. They are often referred to as ronchi, which is a breath sound that we will talk about in just a bit. Next up we have wheezes. Wheezes are high-pitched abnormal breath sounds that are heard as air flows through a narrowed airway. 
they sound kind of like a whistle and are most audible during the expiratory phase of breathing. So there are a few different types and causes of wheezes and that's what we're going to discuss now. So if bilateral wheezing is heard in both lungs, this is an indication that bronchoconstriction is present, which can be treated with a short-acting bronchodilator like albuterol. On the other hand, when wheezes are heard in only one lung, this is referred to as unilateral wheezes, which indicates that a foreign body obstruction is present. And in this case, a bronchoscopy would be indicated. And another common cause of wheezes is that they are heard when patients are fluid overloaded. So for example, in patients with CHF and pulmonary edema. We created an entire video about wheezing, so definitely check that out if you're interested. I'll drop links down below in the description. So the next type of breath sound is ronchi. This is an abnormal breath sound that can be heard when air moves through larger airways that have excess amounts of mucus or secretions. These lung sounds are often low pitched and are audible during the expiratory phase. The main difference between ronchi and wheezes is that ronchi sounds are low and dull while wheezes are high and squeaky. As a respiratory therapist, when you hear ronchi, you should recommend suctioning or bronchial hygiene therapy. Next up is strider. Strider is a high pitched lung sound that is heard when there is an upper airway obstruction. It is most often heard in the inspiratory phase of breathing. Several medical conditions can cause strider, including croup, epiglottitis, post extubation laryngeal edema, and foreign body aspiration. Strider can be treated with cool mist and racemic epinephrine, but in severe cases, which would be a medical emergency, intubation and mechanical ventilation would be indicated. Next up is diminished breath sounds. These are lung sounds that are heard when there is decreased air movement in the lungs. So a lot of times, patients with COPD or an acute asthma attack will have diminished breath sounds because they aren't moving much air in and out of the lungs. Then, after a bronchodilator is administered, if you listen to their breath sounds again, you'll hear wheezes. This is actually a sign that the patient has improved because the bronchodilator is working and has opened up the airways some compared to what it was. This is just something to keep in mind for patients with diminished breath sounds. And last but not least, we have the pleural friction rub. This is a loud grating sound that is heard over the lungs when inflamed pleura rub together. It is caused by decreased levels of fluid in the pleural space and this lung is often heard in patients with pleurisy. Now I already briefly mentioned most of the causes of abnormal breath sounds, but real quick, let's do a quick recap. So crackles are lung sounds that are caused by air moving through secretions of the small or middle airways. Wheezes are caused by air moving through a narrowed or constricted airway. Ronchi is caused by air moving through secretions in the larger airways. Strider occurs when an upper airway obstruction is present. Diminished breath sounds are heard when there is decreased air movement in the lungs. And a pleural friction rub is heard when inflamed pleura rub together due to decreased levels of fluid in the pleural space. Now again, there are hundreds of causes of abnormal breath sounds. These are just a few of the common examples that you should be familiar with. So now let's talk about bronchial breath sounds. These are hollow lung sounds that can be heard in both normal and abnormal conditions. So these sounds are normal when heard over the trachea. However, they are abnormal when heard over the lung fields. So during auscultation, if you place the stethoscope on the patient's trachea, you will hear bronchial breath sounds and this is normal. But if you're listening to the lung fields and you hear bronchial breath sounds, this is an abnormal finding. So for example, let's say you're auscultating a patient and you hear bronchial breath sounds over the right lower lobe. 
This is a common finding in patients with pneumonia and it indicates that consolidation is present. So that's just a good tidbit to remember about bronchial breath sounds. So now that we've covered all the different types of breath sounds, lung sounds, everything you need to know, real quick, let's go through the steps of performing auscultation of the lungs. So first and foremost, you want to explain the procedure to the patient to establish trust and report. Stand close to the patient to gain access to the target area. And in this case, of course, it is the patient's chest or thoracic area because we are listening to the lungs. If the diaphragm of the stethoscope is cold, be sure to warm it up by rubbing the surface just to avoid shocking or startling the patient when that cold surface hits their skin. Place the earpieces of the stethoscope in your ears and adjust them as needed. Hold the diaphragm firmly against the patient's skin with enough pressure to have the patient take slow, deep breaths through an open mouth. As they do that, listen to the sounds and try to identify their intensity, location, strength, pattern, and duration. Always listen to the patient's anterior side first. Start at the tops of the lungs, then move downward to the lung bases. Then proceed to do the same thing on the posterior side. Compare the right lung to the left lung and also compare the anterior to the posterior side. And last but not least, document the findings in the patient's chart. Now remember, in the hospital, if it doesn't get documented, it never happened. And that leads us to the final portion of this video, what is the best stethoscope for auscultation? Now in order to perform auscultation and listen to breath sounds in the most effective way possible, you need to get your hands on a high quality stethoscope. And our top recommendation is the 3M Lippmann Classic 3 stethoscope. This one's our favorite basically because you get the most bang for your buck. You get a high quality stethoscope that is great for listening to breath sounds at a reasonable price compared to the more expensive cardiology models. If you're interested, I'll drop a link below so you can check it out. I'll also put links to our full list of reviews of the best stethoscopes for medical professionals. Alright guys, that wraps up our video on lung sounds, breath sounds, and auscultation. I truly hope that this video was helpful for you. And if you want to support the channel, do me a big favor and hit that like button. It actually really helps a lot and I greatly appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe because we have some more helpful videos that will be coming out soon and you don't want to miss them. That's it for this one. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. And as always, breathe easy my friend.